Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a grocery store for all of your city building needs. And not only will I show you how to make the entire outside of your grocery store in this video, I will also be showing you how to make the entire inside of your grocery store as well. Literally everything that you have seen and can see on the screen right now. If you enjoyed this video, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me in the channel out very, very much. And subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Click that little bell next to the subscription button that'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. But without any further ado, let's get started. So just before we start building everybody, here are all of the materials that we are going to be using in our grocery store. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. And I would also love to point out that we are going to be using more stuff later on, but I'll let you know just before we actually start using it so it's not a massive surprise. The amount of space required to make this build is a 19 by 16 block area, as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which I would always recommend making if you are planning out a city. It will help out quite a bit. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Make sure that you've got all those starting materials. Make sure you've got enough room to make it. Even build the grid if you think it will help. And once you have all that stuff, we can get started. Step one, my city building friends, come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your grid. If you've made it, count backwards from the corner one, two, and three. And this is where we're going to kick things off. Place seven terracotta on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're then going to extend to the right by 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then we're going to extend that block all the way down to the ground. Like this. What we are then going to do is extend that 14th block towards the back of the build by 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we're going to join that all the way down to the ground. We also want to take that 12th block and extend it across the build. And also join it all the way to the front left hand corner of the build. And we want to extend this corner down. And that will give us a box shape like this. What we then want to do is on this final side, the side that we've actually funnily enough ended upon, we want to install a couple of windows whilst we're here. We do this by taking the back pillar of the build, we place one, two, three terracotta next to the pillar extending towards the front of the build. We place a glass on top, extend it forwards by two, place two terracotta, one, whoops, <laughs> one, and two, extending forwards, and then five, one, two, three, four, so hard, five, there we go, we place five glass extending towards the front of the build, and what we can then do is fill the entire side in using terracotta, this might take a moment or two, and in addition to filling this side in, we're actually going to be filling quite a few sides in. We're also going to fill this side in also. This is the back side, I should probably vocalize that. And we are also going to be filling in the right side, although the right side is a tad more complicated actually than, uh, than just filling it in. But uh, the back we are keeping this way because we don't need too many windows. So the right side we're going to fill in as well, although as I mentioned we are going to be adding a little something else as well just on the right side where we're going to have to dig out a little bit of the wall, but that's actually easier to do once the wall has been formed anyway. And that will give us this, so you can see we've pretty much got a, a, an almost complete box. So on the front of the build, we are going to have to add some details. Uh, let's start on the right side here and start at the bottom. We want to place a terracotta on the ground next to the bottom front right hand corner. We're going to then place ourselves a block of quartz to the left of it and extend upwards by two. One, two. Place a glass left of the quartz, quartz left of the glass, extend the quartz down to the ground. We then want to place five, one, two, three, four, five upside down quartz stairs extending across from the bottom of the entrance way with a block of quartz on the end and extend upwards by two, like so. 
We're going to fill the center of these two pillars in the left and right sides using some glass pane like that. And then we're just going to fill the left side here in using terracotta. And that terracotta can actually continue on upwards and uh, hit the roof like that. Uh, we want to do the same thing on the right side like this. We then want to add terracotta across the top of everything that we've just made, so the quartz and the glass like so. And then we're just going to fill the middle of this remaining area in using some white stained, white stained? White concrete. I guess it is stained, but it's not in the name. Just simply white concrete. None of that stained kind. Okay, so the space in between the bottom of the build here and the white concrete sign, we are going to place some wool in between it. It's going to be a mix of white and red wool, like this. It actually doesn't matter which one comes first, as long as you alternate in between. Now that you have done that, I feel as though that we have to add a couple of oak fence posts on the right side of the build. So, uh, from the front right corner of the build and the back right corner of the build, you want to leave yourself a gap of four, or not a gap, you want to one, two, three, four, four rows away from the corners of the build on the right side, you want to place yourself a one, two, three, Four, there we go, four oak fence extending upwards from those two corners. So from the corners, you leave a row of four, and then you want to have two rows of four oak fence like this. And those are going to be the uh, way that the canopy that we are going to have, the overhang, is going to be propped up. And we're just going to get rid of some of these materials, although we might need them again. And we're going to grab the string, white carpet, red carpet, we need some dirt, spruce trap doors, light grey concrete, black concrete, item frames, and some oak signs. So, what do we need all of these for? Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is on the front left of the grocery store, we want to have a row of one, two, three, four dirt here, just in front of the four terracotta on the front left hand side of the grocery store. We're going to extend that dirt upwards and forwards, like this. We're going to place spruce trap doors in front of the bottom row of dirt, and we're going to cover up the sides of the dirt using some spruce trap doors as well. This is going to be kind of like a little produce section, it's going to have some fruit and some carrots and stuff um, that people can buy and are on, like, just being advertised just to the left of the store. Um, later on, we're actually going to be placing ourselves some, uh, we need some item frames, and they are going to be above this entire section, but you're going to leave a gap of one because we're actually going to be growing stuff, and that's going to advertise what is on offer. Uh, on the right side of the build here, we want to have an ATM or a cash machine, whatever you want to call it, and that's going to be made out of light grey concrete, black concrete on top, we're going to need an item frame in front of the black concrete, we actually need a stair block of any kind really, so I mean even the quartz stairs would do, uh, we might change that out a little bit later, but that's basically just to advertise that it's an ATM, so... I don't actually even know what ATM stands for. Active transfer money, something, I'd, whatever it is. Basically, this is where you get the moolah from, and uh, we'll have a diamond in there later. And we do have a button on us, so I'll just uh, whip out the button quite quickly, and we'll place that there, and that'll pre pretty much be the cash machine. Uh, I, th I think I'll probably swap that stairs out a little bit later on, but we, we can do that later. I'm gonna put the button away and get the string back out. Uh, reason being is because underneath the uh, the kind of like canopy that we have created on the front of the build, uh, we want to have a, do I even need to, I don't think I need to crouch, no, perfect. Um, we want to have a row of carpets that extend outwards from the walls that we've placed. And the carpets are going to correspond with the walls that they extend outwards from. So it just adds a little bit, a uh, little bit more of a 3D effect to the little canopy that we have created. Uh, I'm quickly realizing that it's not best to create the canopy on the right hand side yet because there is a little bit more to it than just that. So on the right side of the build here, we're actually going to chuck everything away that we don't quite need just yet. And we're going to grab ourselves, we need the light grey concrete, we'll need red concrete, we'll need black concrete item frames, we'll need ourselves some quartz slab, 
buttons, oak signs, and uh, also I think the quartz stairs too. On this side of the build there is going to be a vending machine, just because I thought that it would really make the build a little bit cooler. The vending machine is going to start one row inwards from the corner here, and we're going to kick it off by placing a row of one, two light grey concretes. Two quartz stairs, one, two, and then a light grey concrete. And we're going to destroy a two by two square above where the quartz stairs are in the wall, and we're going to place black concrete there instead. We're going to place two rows of red concrete on top of all of the light grey. And then we are going to extend the light grey concrete forwards, the red concrete forwards as well. We're going to put a top on this by placing ourselves some quartz slabs, like this. We're going to use item frames inside of the vending machine that will be filled in with all sorts of other stuff. Um, we're going to extend the quartz test forward by placing some quartz slabs and we're going to place some buttons on the front left hand side of the vending machine and we'll have signs. So you know how vending machines it's like you have options like it might be like 1A and 1B and whatever and it corresponds to what you want out of the vending machine. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do choose to write in these signs as long as you know it, it, it makes sense. Um, we want a button on this side as well with an item frame. So this is where one would put the money in, this is where you would select your stuff, and that is where it would fire out. Um, later on, we're going to grab some stuff to put inside the vending machine, and we will seal it up with glass. So that is going to stay like that for, well, for a little while, actually. Uh, to the right of here, we are going to have kind of like some flower disp uh, displays. So uh, th this is quite simple. It's made out of dirt, spruce trap door, item frames, water buckets, and cauldrons, and not too much more. And the idea here is um, quite often, you know, outside grocery stores and uh, corner shops, uh, some sometimes we call them in England, you know, convenience stores, whatever, the smaller um, non-chain varieties, you, you just have like a whole mix match of different things outside, which is why we've got so many different things on offer. And uh, one of the things might be some fresh flowers. So we're going to have uh, perhaps like a row of dirt just back here. We'll extend the middle one upwards. Uh, we'll place a few cauldrons around. Um, we'll fill a couple of the cauldrons in and we'll place item frames on top of the rest of the cauldrons. So a couple of the cauldrons will be filled with water, so they're empty. The other cauldrons we will have, um, you know, it, it just makes sense that we would have some flowers on there. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to change this one. I'm gonna place spruce, tra uh, spruce trap door, kind of like flipping upwards to just kind of conceal that a little bit. Uh, you could even have some advertisements uh, for flowers just kind of like uh, strewn about the place. Um, actually, you can't place them that high because we're going to place some string. I believe the string is going to be placed here. Uh, so, you know, a little a little setup like this will look pretty good. Um, we are now going to use our string, white carpet and red carpet, and we're going to create a little bit of a canopy. And it, it, it's quite simple. It's basically, it's the same idea as this on the front of the build, but it's just on the back of the build. So uh, I'm just going to connect. I don't know why I keep crouching. I keep thinking you have to crouch to, to play string, but you don't. Um, we're just going to extend a row of string between the two oak fence areas. And we're just going to make a canopy. So again, it's, it's just going to be red carpet, white carpet, red carpet, white carpet. It sounds like a tongue twister, doesn't it? Um, and we're just going to extend them, extend them backwards. And uh, the idea will be, of course, to extend them forwards. Now, the reason that we waited to do this instead of just doing it early is because of some of what we've made, i.e. the vending machine, we don't actually have to place uh, all that string. So we would have had to have destroyed it. Um, uh, the unfortunate part about string is, I don't know whether it's just my eyes or what, um, it's sometimes hard to see whether you've placed it or not. So, But luckily the game will tell you quite quickly in that it won't let you place a carpet on top uh, uh, where you want to place it uh, if you've not placed the string properly. So um, yeah, I guess just be careful and just make sure that you're able to place it. So like you don't have to, like here for instance, let's, let's start again here on this left side. Um, here for instance, you won't have to place it because the quartz uh, slab will double as a carpet, luckily. So uh, we can just get all this placed. 
And then finally, we just have to connect it to the... I, I double placed it somewhere. <laughs> Uh, I, d I don't, I, d I think I'm, my, I, d I think I'm gonna have to destroy some string, but I don't want to go destroying yet, so, uh, here, and then here, I think that I placed a double string all the way on that left-hand side, we'll see, I'm pretty sure that I did, yeah, okay, so destroy, there we are, perfect, and, um, it just gives kind of like a nice look, it makes a, it makes it look as though all of this stuff on the right-hand side is, uh, is a part of the shop, and again, I know it looks a little bit weird and a little bit empty at the moment, guys, but trust me, when you start filling all of this stuff in, all of it, like, it's all, it'll immediately just, like, spring to life, just like that, it'll be, it, it'll look great, trust me. So, the next thing that I want to do, and it's not my favourite part of this build, or any build, is to make the signs. Uh, that we're just gonna put a grocery sign, basically, just uh, uh, in the, like, the big white sign. Uh, it's made using a loom. We'll need seven white banners. Depending upon whether you use a loom or not, you'll need more or less dye, but we're grabbing a stack of uh, white and black dye. Uh, we're going to chuck the loom on the ground here. Uh, we're going to crack it open. If you're on console, I always recommend placing the banners in the, not top left corner of your inventory, but just to the right of it. And uh, we're just going to keep the dies here. Uh, the first letter that we have to make is G. So, banner in the loom. My bad. Banner in the loom. Black die. Why do I place the uh, banners there? You might also be wondering if you've never watched one of my videos before. Um, if When you grab a new one, you just simply flick upwards and it's right there. But if you were to have the banners here, say, then you, if you click upwards, it takes you into the uh, pattern selection. So, just a quick little quick little tip. So, uh, we're going to start G. That's a vertical row of black die on the right side of the banner, traveling upwards. Grab that banner. Take the white die out put the, or uh, take the black die out, put the white die in, and make the upper half of the banner white. Grab that banner, place it back in the loom, get rid of the white, put the black back in, and place a horizontal row of black across the bottom of the banner. Grab it, put it back in, vertical row of black up the left side of the banner. Grab it, put it back in, place a horizontal row of black die across the top of the banner, and that is G. Probably one of the more complicated letters. Brand new banner in the loom, we have to make our horizontal row of black across the top, vertical row of black up the left side, diagonal row of black, top left corner to bottom right corner, boom, R. Brand new banner in the loom, this is O, this is easy. Horizontal row of black across the top, horizontal row of black along the bottom, uh, vertical row of black on the right side, and a vertical row of black on the left, and there you go, O. Oh. Now C is very similar, so we need a brand new letter, a vertical row of black on the left, horizontal row of black on the top, horizontal row of black on the bottom, you just leave the right side off and there you have your C. Uh, now we have E, and this is also another systematic one that's rather easy. Horizontal row of black across the top, horizontal row of black through the middle, horizontal row of black along the bottom, vertical row of black on the left side, E. Uh, now, we would need another R. You may have to make one depending, depending upon the mode that you're building this in, but we can just reuse it, so you would need to make another R. Now, we have to make Y. Y is made by placing a, a diagonal row of black uh, across, from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of the banner. Grab it, put it back in the loom, get rid of the black die, get the white die back out, make the lower half of the banner white, grab the banner, chuck the uh, white die out, put the black back in, and place a diagonal row of black die top right corner to bottom left corner. Y. Perfect. So now we have Grossy. <laughs> uh, but we can easily turn this into grocery. So, um, inside the white border here, the two rows of white, we're going to leave a gap on the left and the right, and we're going to place G R O C E R Y. Do remember, you might need to make another R. But there you go. Nice and easy. Grocery. Okay, so we are quickly reaching the limitations that we have with our current materials. But there are a couple of things that we can still use our materials for. We're going to use our block of quartz to make a floor on the inside of our grocery store. 
That's what I'm choosing to use as a floor. I'm using block of quartz. You can use any other variety of flooring. A personal favourite of mine, which I'm, I think I'm going to use for the ceiling, I haven't really decided yet. A personal favourite of mine to use is uh, quartz or chiselled quartz. Um, I'm really liking that for floors these days. I really like the fact that it's a light material. If you use lighter materials on the inside of your build, you will find that your, your interior looks a little bit bigger and it also just looks brighter. Um, this can easily be countered, if you want to use a dark material for the inside of your build, this can easily be countered by adding more light, but I just find that, uh, that white or any light material will look far more spacious, so uh, that's, that's completely up to you. Uh, now that we've used most of these materials in, you know, pretty much mostly to their capacity, we're actually going to get rid of all of them, and we're going to grab some new materials. You will have seen some of these before, I'm sure that there will be some overlap, but here are all of the materials that we are going to be using to progress through this build. Please make sure that you have access to all of those materials, and enough of them as well, and once you do have them all, we can get this party started. Alright, so now that we have all of that stuff, we can get started again, and by the way, it does not end here, we will need more and more stuff. I don't know how much more, but we will need more, I can tell you that. Uh, so, the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to install the ceiling, or at least the outline for the ceiling, I think. Um, that's going to sit directly above where the glass is on the inside of the build, the two uh, rows of glass that we have on specifically the left side of our grocery store. And I'm just going to add a halo, I'll refer to it as, of uh, chiseled quartz block just around the top of the build. Um, I'm going to place a layer of grey concrete on top of there because there is a, it's actually like a, a double ceiling because we're going to be placing some lights inside of the chiseled quartz layer and thus we need something on top. And I think that grey concrete actually works uh, quite well for that. Okay, so the reason that we're just marking out where the ceiling is is just so that we can see what we're doing for the moment so that we've got enough light in here to actually build. But we will be filling all of that in. I'm going to focus on the front left hand corner of the build which is on this left wall here. Uh, we're going to place two upside down quartz stairs extending towards the back of the build. Place a white concrete on the end and then place two more upside down quartz stairs. Place a white concrete on the end, extend the white concrete upwards and both of them forwards. Place a layer of quartz slabs on top of the entire area like this and place item frames above and inside of the two freezers that we have just made. To the right of the freezers we're going to have just a couple of armor stands, these can be advertising any number of things and we're going to place a couple of item frames above them. To the right of the armor stands, we're going to have a rack. It's made out of two light grey concretes extending up from the ground, quartz slabs across the top of it extending towards the back of the build, and the rack is made out of two end rods suspended inside of this area, joined together inwards like this. Now that we have done that, we are going to, I believe, chuck these things away for a moment. We might be needing more of those later. And we're going to grab spruce wood planks, spruce trap doors, barrels, red concrete, light grey carpet, cauldron, oak trap door, trip by hook, lever. We're going to come all the way to the front back, or rather, sorry, the back right hand corner of the build. So kind of like just the opposite side of where we were building. Kind of like a weird clockwise motion, motion really. Uh, we're going to place a vertical row of spruce wood planks extending from the corner of the room, from the ground to the top of the ceiling like that. We're going to place a row of three, one, two, three barrels extending uh, from the bottom of the shelves towards the front of the build, and then a vertical row of spruce wood planks extending from the bottom to the top again. We're going to place a row of spruce trap doors, uh, just joining the... Basically, we're creating a shelf out of the top part of this kind of like unit here, and we just want to have an entire row exposed 
just like this. Uh, the reason for this is this is basically kind of like a, a bakery stand of sorts. So we're going to have some like item frames kind of like strewn about the place. I love that word strewn. And um, you know, it's, it's basically just going to have like cookies and cakes and breads and stuff. That's, that's all that is really. Um, to the right of this here, we are going to place a cauldron with an oak trap door. That's just going to be kind of like a bin. Uh, to the right of this, the bin, we are going to place a red concrete. We're going to extend it upwards by two. We're going to have to grab the light grey concrete back out again. And we're going to extend the bottom one, two, to the front of the build. Red concrete on the end, up by two. We're going to use this as a coffee machine. The coffee machine is going to have a tripwire hook uh, in the top right hand corner of the black concrete space with a lever to the left of it. We're going to have to have uh, light grey carpet along the top of the coffee machine that will be easy to place as we have the hook and the lever. Um, we also need ourselves a flower pot and a rail. Um, so the flower pot will be below the tripwire hook and the rail will be below the lever. Um, we have to use some buttons. The buttons are going to be placed on either right side or the left side. On the opposite side, we're going to need item frames, and those will just have cocoa beans in them later. Uh, we're going to have another bin. That's just going to be a cauldron and a note trap door like this. And you could even advertise one of the bins as kind of like a, a specific like rubbish bin for the coffee. So you can have like that, and then you could have like a, a flower pot in there. So that's where your cups go. Uh, or not, you know, do whatever. <laughs> um, what else? So, as we're at the front door, I'm going to place a, a bell, an actual bell, just on the door. And that can either be here or here, maybe maybe here, so it's a little bit further away. Maybe even two of them, or maybe it can even be above. Uh, the point of the bell is um, just to alert the shop owner that somebody is in their store. What else do we want to do? Well, we have to have two rows of bookshelves. The bookshelves are just going to represent um, aisles and just like general stuff that you can buy. The bookshelves are basically, um, they're basically split quite easily. Where we have the freezers, the uh, two rows of white concrete here, you just want to leave a gap of two from the white concrete and you want to have a row of bookshelves that also leave a gap of two between like the coffee machine so like here and also leave a gap of two between the bin as well so we only have two rows of bookshelves the bookshelves are going to be two blocks high and that'll actually do it it just looks like a nice it's busy enough in here that it actually looks you know it, it looks quite passable it's quite it's, it's not a bad interior once it's done we do have a little bit more to do however um, so we also have to think about where the actual shop owner would be. So the shop owner, I, I think that we're going to use uh, some light grey concrete here. And we're just going to need, um, we can either use a spruce trap door or we can use an oak trap door. Um, what I'm talking, where did my light grey concrete go? <laughs> okay, um, so basically the area that the shop owner is um, is in is is basically the same width as the bookshelves so on this back wall with the same width of the bookshelf we want to have two rows of light gray concrete extending forwards from the wall it actually wants to be three rows and we want them to join together as well like this kind of like a u-shape we have to be able to get behind the counter so i think that we're just going to place ourselves a, a little oak trap door and then that way you can just kind of like get get here. Um, I'm thinking that I might actually have a couple of rows of um, bookshelves kind of like just to the left here. Um, I think that I kind of like that. It just makes this area look a little bit more filled up. Um, I want to have a shelving area as well just behind um, the counter. The, the shelf can actually extend from the actual physical bookshelves themselves and it can kind of like extend across and we'll put some goodies on here. Um, behind the counter space we just have to place something like maybe we'll place like a a scaffolding and that can kind of like be a table. Um, we need ourselves, um, we'll use uh, a quartz stairs that can be the cash register and maybe like a light grey carpet that can just look like something. Um, we're going to use a lantern and perhaps like a flower pot. The lantern can provide a little bit of light and the flower pot can just literally be for flowers. Um, what else can we do here? Well, 
honestly, you know, again, we're, we're kind of reaching almost a, a maximum of usefulness with our materials. We're going to have to swap over again. But anywhere that you do kind of see fit a little bit. And by the way, is there a way to make this look a little bit better? I'll think about that. Um, anywhere that you can. I think it'd be good to have kind of like um, paintings, kind of like this, looking like advertisements for posters and stuff. So I think that the paintings would actually be quite good for that, looking like some sort of advertisements for different things. Um, that could, they could work there for instance, and they could work here. I, I don't know if, if perhaps, I, I, I don't know if I like that. I don't know if that's a little too much, but we'll just experiment with that a little bit. Okay, so the next thing that we are actually going to do, something that we can do right now with this set of materials, and we are going to have to dump again soon, is uh, we're just going to fill the ceiling in. Uh, the ceiling's going to be made, of course, out of chisel quartz block. We already have the well, would you call it the framework in for the chisel quartz block? And then we're going to place the layer of grey concrete on top of it. Uh, the grey concrete could easily be swapped out for any anything else. Um, the reason that I like the, the dark grey, I don't know. <laughs> it, I, I just kind of like thought about it. I, I guess I just kind of sort of like it. Um, if you want, if you want to kind of like make the top of this look a little bit fancier, you could add, say, like a, a little aircon unit up here. That uh, that would be quite easy to do. We actually have the materials for it already, and then that way, if anybody gl uh, like glimpses uh, a little peek at the top of the building, they'll be like, "Huh, there's something up here." So all that would be made out of is uh, some light grey concrete. We'll place it towards the front left hand corner of the store we'll have like a two by three area here and we'll just place rails on top of it so that's made out of uh, light gray concrete and it basically it just looks like a little aircon unit there is nothing else that you really have to have up here there's not even a reason for that it just looks a little bit better i'm i'm not going to add anything on else on top of the roof uh but the one last thing that we are going to be doing, and by the way, it's it's pretty bright in here, right? It's it's actually not too, not too dark at all. Um, let's place some uh some lights though. So, the center of the room. Let me let me think about this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This room does have a center, but it's going to look a little bit weird. So the center would be where the middle of this window is, I think. Um. And the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So th there is a clearly defined center. I think that the middle of the saw is about here. Am I right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then, yeah, there'll be 5 there. So that's where the middle of the store is. I always like to place lights evenly in the in the ceiling. That's why I'm doing some counting and figuring out exactly where we can place it. So if we place... If we leave a gap of, uh, there's not really a good, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say that we leave like a gap of, yeah, let's leave a gap of three between the center light, and then we'll place another sea lantern, and then a gap of three and another sea lantern like this. That's not looking too bad. And then we'll leave a gap of two between the sea lanterns extending towards the front and back of the store. And then that will be fine. And then the sea lanterns will be placed evenly inside of the ceiling. Um, it doesn't really line up that well with uh, the stuff inside of the... Okay, so th this is basically, when I place lights in rooms, I like to think about what's in the room, what the lights are highlighting, and if they're being placed evenly inside of the ceiling, and if they look right. Um, th there's not really a way to make the lights correspond with the stuff inside of the store, except with kind of like the aisles, how we've kind of done here, and they're spaced quite evenly, so I reckon that's quite a nice pattern of lights. It's just something to think about. It's, I, I know, it's a little bit crazy, right? I went off the deep end a little bit, but... That's looking pretty good. The the store's really coming along. Uh, we're going to dump our materials now. We're pretty much now just looking more so for decorative materials. Um, so we're going to grab some decorative materials. 
Here are all of the materials that we are going to need to finish off the store. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. Something to bear in mind as well. Uh, you might be able to see that we're going to be using some flowers. I've only included one kind of flower, but you're going to need a variety. I just don't want to include all of those in the list. We're going to need more than one kind of crop. Uh, you know, I've, I've only included one, but that is the amount of different ones that you are going to need. So you're just going to have to uh, use a little bit of a mix match for some of those uh, kinds of materials. And it will be the same with the cakes. So like you'll need different kinds of cakes as well. So I've only listed, say, you'll need like five cakes. You'll need a variety uh, that adds up to five. Same with the armor, same for the banner, same for everything that we're going to be using. So once you do have all of those things, however, we can get things started. All right, so now that we have all of that stuff, we can get this thing started. We're going to need some different meats to put in the freezers. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't grab a variety myself, really, because I don't have that much inventory space. So uh, I am going to be using the same thing, but obviously a variety would look way better. Um, but just use some different meats inside of the freezers and then seal the freezers up using light blue glass. And then we're just going to give them door handles in the form of buttons. So if you crouch and place a stone button um, on the freezers, that'll just look like a handle that you can like pull open. Um, now that we've done that, we do have these dummies here that we can place some like chest plates on or some helmets. And again, v variety would be key with all of these things. Like you'd want to place like helmets, some different colors, uh, put different things in the item frames. But again, lack of inventory space. Uh, I'm going to place a blue banner here. Um, you can't actually, pl can you place them on end rod? No, you can't, unfortunately. Um, and it looks a little bit goofy if you place it there. So we're going to place like a banner here. But it'd be kind of cool if we could place... Um, banners. Can we? Hmm, my bad. How about on the ground? Ah, we, okay, okay, we can do that. So we can have the banners like, uh, there we go, I didn't realize that you could do that. Silly me, I never thought about that. Um, we can have the banners kind of like stood up on the ground, but like they're hanging off of the shelves like that. That's kind of cool. I did. However, I never thought about that. Um, I realized I just made a little hole there in the wall, didn't I? I don't think I'll even need the chicken again anyway. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good little display. But again, different colors of banners would look better. Um, the bakery area that I mentioned, uh, I'm going to place some cake on the shelves. I'm also going to place cake inside of all the item frames. I'd use cookies, pumpkin pie and stuff. Um, I'll vary all of the item frames and stuff later. Um, once I actually have a chance to, you know, go through the inventory and stuff. Um, the coffee machine, we have to place cocoa beans in these item frames there doesn't need to be a variety here um we can place as we can use a, a map or some paper here instead if you want to represent that uh, that's for something else it's just like a general rubbish or you can just keep uh, a cup in there just you know that's where the coffee cups go. Um, I have an orchid with me. That's just for this flower part here, just along uh, the counter space. Um, I have all sorts of different... I've put the chest plate on. I have like crafting tables and fletching tables and uh, the cartography and the furnace. And th these are basically just placed up above here. Um, just inside the shop. It just look, It's just kind of like a cool thing to have. Um, we could even have like a little window back here too. I, d I actually don't know about the window. I don't think I like that idea. Um, as we move outside, because that's pretty much most of the inside done, ladies and gentlemen. There's not really uh, too much else that you could add. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, maybe some item frames back here might look uh, might look all right. Um, maybe advertising some different things. I didn't include this, but I, I do think that... I don't know what I'd put in those. I mean, you could even just like recycle some of these a little bit. Um, you know, just some item frames just to make it look a little bit better perhaps um i don't know whether it'd look uh better to kind of like stack that up to the ceiling i think that that looks okay actually i just want the place to look full and interesting that's all um uh, as we head outside, you know, we have a couple of things out here to do as well. You guys know that uh, I wanted to hoe this uh, hoe this area, so um, I like the idea of, uh, like, hoeing the, uh, the grass or the dirt that we placed. I think it was actually dirt, and uh, placing a couple of different seeds in here. Um, those will grow eventually, and um, all, you, all you would then have to do is just, like, fill these item frames with different things. Uh, I only have uh, pumpkins and watermelons on me for some reason, but, you know, that's not actually what's, uh, what's even growing. So you'd probably put some wheat and some beetroot up there, and maybe some other things as well, just to better represent what's, uh, what's going on. Um, in this 
item frame, the ATM, you'd want to place either like a diamond or gold or whatever it is that you use as currency. I'm using a diamond. On the right side of the build here, um, I'm just going to fill the machine up with cakes because that is what I would want from a vending machine, pure cake. And I'm just going to seal it up using some black glass, but obviously variety. Um, this item frame, I'm just going to use gold ingots, or you could again, you could use diamonds again. You know, depending upon what kind of currency, uh, you might want to vary it. A my bad. Uh, you might want to vary it a little bit. Ah, why do I keep destroying stuff? There we go. That's that's better. Um, and then just on this side here, just for the flower display, obviously you're just going to need all different kinds of flowers of uh, of varying kinds. So. Um, I'm using blue orchids. It actually looks a little bit different. Maybe it's just the view that I'm looking at it from. Um, they're all blue orchids, but they, they would be a variety. You could even use some leaves and maybe even some um, like green carpets to kind of like pepper around to make it look better. Um, all we then have to do once you know you filled all of that stuff in, uh, put a door on the place. I like a dark oak door because it's quite a stern contrast from the uh, block of quartz. And then all you would then have to do, and this is literally just to really, this is the, the last thing that I am going to be doing here. Um, if you just place some smooth stone, just smooth stone in the ground just to create a pavement. I think I'm also going to add a road just out front too. Uh, it really does just put like a finish on things. So I'm actually going to dig all of this out outside. I'm going to add the road. I think that I'm going to add a bit of more variety for you. But yeah, d just to show you what goes where, I just wanted to point that out. Um, and I might also replace the top of the ATM too with like a, a great stair of some sort of description. But pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully I've showed you how to make the entire thing. You're, you, you're going to have to vary it um, to kind of like suit your own interests. Um, but th that's pretty much it. So why don't I do all of those things, put the little finishing touches on there for you, and uh, I can show you what it looks like, because it does look quite good once it has all been fully completed. So this is what your grocery store will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. As you can see, I have altered the flower section a little bit to include some leaves and some carpet and just a different variety of flowers. It just looks way better. I've also included a bit of a better variety in the vending machine, machine, although I'd notice that I've got two bread in there. Uh, I changed the top of the ATM as well. Uh, I also grew the actual crops uh, for the little produce section, and I changed the item frames up top. And as we head inside, I have also added a variety of meats to the freezers. I have also changed the variety of the armor stands. I even changed the banners a little bit. Actually didn't do anything to the counter area. I actually quite like it as it is. And uh, But what I did change is the uh, the little bakery section, and, and that's pretty much it. So that's that's the entire build, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very very happy with it. I'm very proud of it, and I I hope that you guys will end up with something that you're equally as happy with too. Wow, I cannot believe that we've built it. I hope that you guys enjoyed building this. I hope that you've ended up with something that you really really love. If you have, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and click that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. Please don't forget to like the video if you really did like it as well that really helps me out too and if you want to check out anything else by me we make all sorts of different city builds on this channel huge variety of stuff check out the card system description below in the top of the comment section for more the city builds playlist is awesome it's actually i think it's called how to build a city but you'll be able to find it dead dead easy in so many different places that i don't even have to get the name right thank you so much for watching everybody i love you all very much and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye